Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction, and this is how to make an elephant explore the size of life part two. We saw the size and life of part one, where he talked about if you throw an elephant from the top of the building, what would happen? That was a really fun video. This is about life uh, two. So now it's not about throwing a, uh, an elephant from the top of the building. Now it's just you know just standing there. How you explore an elephant? All right, this is gonna be fun. You know, uh, k k this is by the channel Kuzgazar in a nutshell. Kuzgazar is a great channel. I love reacting to this channel because all the scientific topic they tackle is just way diverse and different. It's just awesome. I wrote quite a few videos from them already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cast. There's a playlist of for it. Kuzgazar reacts on something like that. Check out the playlist too, like CGP Grey, uh, Oli Sarcastic Production, Internet Historian, things like that. Tier Zoo. And yeah, this was this one. And remember, people, uh, this is a Cuz Gazette video. It might get blocked. So I have to put checkered box there. But if it's there and it's annoying you, I guess play the original video side by side. Uh, there's a link of the original video in the description. So yeah. All right, let's watch this one. Let's shrink an elephant to the size of a mouse and enlarge a mouse and make it the size of an elephant because this is our video and we want to see what happens. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, mouse would collapse under its own weight because the feet are not stumpy. It's not thick enough. First, our now tiny elephant stumbles around and then drops dead. Tiny elephant buddy is very cold, frozen to death in minutes. Our giant mouse looks very uncomfortable for a moment and then it explodes, leaving hot mouse ah. insides everywhere. Why? Because of size. We All right, before I even watch this video, I'm going to guess something here. I don't know if I'm going to be right or not, but I think it's going to talk about metabolism here. Smaller things have higher metabolism because, you know, they're basically, uh, you know, surface area compared to their volume is uh, not the same as the bigger animals. So they get colder faster. That's why, you know, people say whenever you, whenever you have uh, babies in your house, people just say that, you know, con uh, give them more blankets than you give yourself because they'll be more colder. Why? Because their volume, co you know, c compared to their surface area is, uh, I guess, you know, lower than yours because... You know, if you double size of some ball or anything, if you double the size of something, their volume will not double, they would go even much higher. So, you know, smaller creatures, it gets colder faster. But bigger bigger creature does not, they get, you know, uh, heaten up, I guess. They, I don't know how else to say that. So smaller creatures have, you know, higher metabolism compared to the big creatures. So I guess I think that's why because elephant has slower metabolism since they are so big and if you just you know basically shrink them down they might freeze to death and uh, you know basically mouse would get exploded because their metabolism is high. I think that's what he's going to talk about there but we'll see. We are optimized to function precisely for the size we are and would die horribly in any other environment. But why exactly? Why does our mouse explode and can we do this to our elephant too if we try hard? Just stop. Life on this planet is based on cells. Cells do vary in size, but they're pretty similar in their dimensions across all species. Yeah. A blue whale doesn't have bigger cells than a hummingbird, just a lot more of them. Cells have to do a lot of stuff to stay alive, and they need energy to be able to do so. To get this energy, animal cells convert food and oxygen into usable chemical energy. This happens in our mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. They're like little coal engines that spit out tiny ATP batteries, which yeah. the cell can use for almost everything it needs to do. Just like an engine, mitochondria get really hot while working. In human skin cells, they reach a scorching 50 degrees Celsius. And some of our cells have up to 2,000 mitochondria which are radiating their heat into the cell. So being alive generates a lot of heat. The more cells you have, the more heat your body generates in total. If our bodies didn't find ways of losing this heat, we would be cooked from the inside and die. But this is a problem for bigger animals because of the way bodies change as living beings scale up. Animals have three properties here that are important. Their length, their outsides or skin, and their insides like organs, bones and hopes and dreams. The thing that's hard to wrap your head around is that when things grow, their insides grow faster than their outsides. Imagine a fleshy cube. If you double the length of its sides, its surface and volume do not double. In fact, the surface is now four times the original size and the volume of the cube eight times the original size. Yeah. 
which is called the square cube law and has been annoying nature for billions of years. I don't know why that's funny. I've seen this. Uh, I don't know if it's a meme or not. You know, every time T-Rex is using their cube to, you know, basically what a Rubik's cube, whatever they call T-Rex doing that is always funny. I don't know why. I've seen that many, many times. It be, I think it's, it's a meme now. So why is this a problem for big animals? Because heat can only leave an object via its surface. So if we make our mouse the size of an elephant, or 60 times longer, it has 3,600 times more surface from which to lose heat. But it has 216,000 times more volume, filled with trillions and trillions of new hot mitochondria that produce more heat. A lot more insides, not that much more skin. Our mouse is very dead, very fast. But big things like elephants exist, so how do they deal with the heat? For one, they evolved ways to get rid of energy more easily, like huge flat ears that have a lot of surface where heat can escape. But that's not enough. Nature's solution is actually very elegant. Elephant cells are much, much slower than mice cells. The bigger an animal is, the less active. Yeah, the science behind surface area is incredible. I love that. You know, uh, basically, uh, you know, you need, if you want to, you know, basically uh, give out lots of heat, you need higher surface area. That's why, you know, uh, what are they called? You know, the winter gloves. Uh, they don't have gaps in between your finger. They are whole. If, if they give you gaps between the finger, now the surface area increases, so the heat will get out faster. So they don't have gaps. They are like, you know, they don't have finger length or whatever. They are like this. It's because of that. So it decreases surface area. So you don't, you know, put out more heat. This is, this is just an awesome, awesome thing. There was an ad, I don't know which, uh, uh, I don't know which, uh, I saw that. When there, there was an ad about, you know, people warming up the bed. And, you know, they were basically, you know, uh, ha had all this insulation on, some kind of clothes or something. And then uh, they were basically, you know, trying to warm up the, you know, bed. So that decreased the surface area by, you know, hiding lots of part of their body. And only, uh, you know, introduced surface area to the bed, very small proportion. And they are like, these people are warming up the bed. No, they are not. You put lots of insulation there. So, you know, surface area is the way. That's why, you know, if you are really hot, you take out your clothes and just spread your hands things because, you know, now you increase your surface area. Like this, you know, it's not, it's not increased. Now there are more surface areas exposed. So surface area is an awesome, awesome science that's just uh, effing awesome. You know, I, I, I you know, explained this to my nephew one day. You know, he's, he's 12 or something, and he's like, oh, that is so awesome. Tivit Selzer. If we classify animals by their metabolic rates and compare that to their overall mass, it's clearly visible. It's not 100% accurate, but it is a good rule of thumb. Elephants are huge meat sacks filled with trillions and trillions of little coal ovens. So they keep the ovens just active enough to keep them running and never at full power. Their whole metabolism is slow. Things move at a nice, chill pace. Small animals need to go the exact opposite way. If you're small, you have a lot of surface area compared to not a lot of volume. You don't have a lot of cell ovens and lose the heat they produce very fast. So very tiny mammals came up with a very extreme solution. Meet the Etruscan shrew, the smallest mammal on Earth. A mole-like thing that's more closely related to hedgehogs than to mice. With a body length of 4 centimeters, it only weighs about 1.8 grams, as much four as a Four centimeters? Pig. It's a tiny, ridiculous... That mouse is four centimeter. What? That's way too small, man. Damn. Ridiculous being. It would basically cool off immediately, so its cells run on overdrive to stay warm. Its tiny ovens are filled at maximum capacity. Its heart beats up to 1,200 times a minute, and it breathes up to 800 times a minute. This creates an extreme need for energy, so the shrew has to eat constantly. After only four hours without food, it starves to death. Damn. And while an African elephant consumes around 4% of its body weight in food each day, our shrew needs 200% of its body weight in food a day just to survive. Imagine having to eat 2,000 Big Macs a day, more than one a minute. Fun for a while, but then not so much. Fun for so a while. So a cubic centimeter of shrew needs 40 times more food than a cubic centimeter of elephant. If an elephant's cells suddenly become as active as the cells of a shrew, a crazy amount of heat would be generated. 
all the liquids in the elephant would suddenly start boiling, and then it would explode in an impressive explosion of steaming hot, burning elephant parts. In reality, before an explosion occurred, the proteins making up our cells would probably be denatured and stop producing heat. But a meat explosion is much more fun than melting an elephant into a mass of hot goo. Regardless, the scaling of the speed of metabolism happens everywhere, even in places we don't expect, like pregnant women. A baby in the womb of its mother behaves as if it were a part of her. Its yeah. cells have about the same metabolic rate, the same speed of life as its mother's organs. It is truly a part of a bigger whole rather than an individual. Until it's not anymore. The very moment a baby is born, a switch is flipped and all its internal processes speed up rapidly. 36 hours after birth, the baby's cells have the same activity rate as a mammalid size. Babies literally transition from being an organ to being an individual in mere hours. Yeah. But there's one thing where big and small things are very similar. Heartbeats. Mammals tend to have a similar amount of heartbeats over their lifetime, typically around 1 billion. So while the shrew and elephant are very different, they share a similar number of heartbeats over the course of their lives. Their speed of life is the opposite and somehow still the same. And for a video in which we made elephants explode for no good reason, this is the most romantic ending we could come up with. Yeah. Speaking of romance and love, one of the questions we get asked most often is how we make animated videos. Yeah, yeah, people go to skillset.com for us, because that and support this channel. Yeah, this is a great topic. I knew he was going to talk about metabolism, obviously. Because first of all, I thought, you know, he might talk about uh, the pressure, basically, that increases, but it's it applies to the, you know, basically a rat, not to elephant. If you scale up a rat to an elephant size, the rat would basically collapse under its own weight, because the feet are not stumpy like an elephant. Same law applies here, since you, you know, increase its size, uh, the, you know, basically it's a skin and, you know, the legs and everything uh, does not scale as much as the volume does. So now the weight is immensely high and the feet cannot basically take all that weight. So it collapses. That's why, you know, Godzilla cannot work uh, in real life. Even if there's Godzilla, you know, it would work fine on the water. But as, as soon as it gets out of the water, it would collapse under its own weight. That's why there are no giant spiders, you know, extremely giant. They would have to have really stumpy legs. So, yeah, and, you know, the whale thing, that's good too, right? I just realized that. Whale is in, in the water. So, it, you know, if, its uh, surface area is basically uh, gets introduced to, uh, I don't know, uh, the water is touching its surface area. Now, water is more molecule than air. So, since it's inside the water, it can basically, you know, uh, dissipates more heat outside because water can suck out more heat. That's why you produce sweat. When you produce sweat, now there are more molecules on, on, on your skin. So when a wind comes, it can take out the heat faster than the only air touching the skin would have done. So that's why whale can be that big too and without and don't explode. I don't know. So yeah, that was how to make an elephant explore the size of life too. I like this series. It's fun. There is also life in size 3 too. How large can bacteria get? I guess I'll react to that tomorrow. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast, all the playlists. Check out the end cards, and I'll see you next time.